Well, I got a lot of good news today. No, I'm not talking about the stock market being at all-time highs, which is great. It's exciting to see the economy and the stock market doing well because there's so many of us common people that are invested in the stock market. 401ks, mutual funds, pension plans for union people. I don't know too many private companies that have union or have unions. Well, some of them do, but that have pensions anymore. I think it's pretty much reserved for unions or the government, which is sad. We should never have public unions, in my opinion. Although, again, I've talked about this before. I'm not against unions per se. I'm against unions that vote and support Democrats, but I'm not against the idea of union unions as a whole. But my wife and I have a child on the way, and we made it through the hurdle. As some of you know, I've shared before on a previous podcast that we had a miscarriage, and that was really painful for us. It was a really drawn out thing because of the medical issues. But this was the doctor's appointment where we found out on our previous baby that's uh, in heaven now. So this was a big milestone for us, and everything's healthy. Praise God. Just so thankful for just that. And, you know, like the, you, you think about the other things in life that just start to pale in comparison when you start talking about the health of your kids. So I'm just praising God today for that. Welcome to How to Build a Tent. My name is Matt Williams. Thank you for listening to the show, for sharing the show with a friend, and for watching live on YouTube and the channel, of course, the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network. We're part of the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network. Go over to hgbt.com. No, go over to fightlaughfeast.com, <laughs> and you can put in HGBT, and you'll get a mug like this. You may get a pint glass like this. I have vitamin water in this right now. You can't really see it in the video, but it has the laser sketch Fight, Laugh, Feast symbol, which is really cool. I really like it. If you have any questions, comments, you can... Email me, Matt, how to build a tent.com, or you can find me on the social media sites, how to build a tent. Appreciate a follow. Thank you for all of those who are following, liking, and sharing the content. That really helps us grow. Twitter account's grown pretty well. I appreciate that. I don't pay for uh, you know likes or all that stuff. So uh, it's just all natural. I love it. Uh, today, tonight, we have our first book club. I'm going to do something for the next one. Also, while we're talking about it, let me know what book you want to do next. I still haven't decided. I might decide by the time of this book club, but I might not. So let me know what you want to do and join. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to create links for iTunes and for Amazon for the audio and then the physical for Amazon. And if you use that link, because I get a percentage of the revenue from those from Amazon or Apple, depending on where you buy it from. If you buy it with that link, then I'll let you be part of the book club. You don't have to pay for it. So you can, we'll figure it out. You email me, let me know. And then I can confirm it. You can send me a screenshot, something like that. And I'll send you an invite to the next book club where you can just join for free and can join. So just the price that you pay to buy the book anyways. I think that'd be a good way to get people more involved in that. I'm really excited about it. This book that we just finished, Never Split the Difference, was really good. Even though Doug swooped in on me and did a review before. But ours is going to be a little more in detail because we're doing a whole hour on it. Doug took a few minutes and recommended it, by the way. Recommended the book. What else is in the news? Oh, man. Trump announced, and this is probably one of the big reasons why we had all-time highs today in the stock market, that a U.S.-China trade deal, phase one, is almost done. And Trump was talking about how this is a major part of the deal, and they're kind of separating out the stuff that they haven't been able to uh, come to agreement on. And it's going to really help the farmers, which is important for this election, because he needs all those people coming out and voting. He can't lose the Midwest. So that's really exciting. I'm really thankful for that. And hey, maybe I, you know, because I was a doubter. I'm going to be honest here. I was trying to figure out how to say it in a way that didn't make me look terrible. But I didn't really think that they would get a trade deal done. I didn't think the Chinese were going to do it. But it's, again, the issue is going to be how do we enforce it? Because the Chinese like to cheat. It's just a fact of life. The Chinese like to cheat. But... I'm thankful for it. And maybe, hey, Trump, Trump can pull something off. He's pulled off things before. I never thought he would do like winning the election. So I'm trying to give him a little benefit of the doubt. Another article I saw that I thought was really interesting said, and according to CNBC, and I have one of these stocks right now. We'll go through the list and I'll tell you at the end how many I actually have. But stock, this is the stocks that Wall Street thinks will 
lead the next leg of the bull market. So it's funny. Now we're just assuming the market's going to go well. So maybe they are on to a good trade deal and they think that Trump's going to win again. It's interesting. Again, this is from CNBC. So here's some stocks. If you're looking for picks, do your own research. This isn't me telling you to buy all these. Again, I only have one of these, I believe. Amazon, Boeing, which I don't I don't know about Boeing. I would say let's stay away from Boeing because of that 737 deal. Uh, but obviously, they're a really big company. They have a lot more products. They have a lot more customers than just airlines. But I mean, that, we might get some bumpy roads on that. Disney, that's the one I, I own some options with Disney. Facebook, Johnson & Johnson, American Co., which I do not know who that is, which maybe I should, and that just makes me look foolish. I don't know. Netflix, again, another one, I, I don't know. It depends. They need to come out with video games. If they can stream video games, I think they're going to be solid. PayPal, they have Venmo. And that has been a real driver for them. So that is that is going to be a good play. Salesforce, they're in everything, man. And they're, they are constantly innovating. I know a lot of big companies that do use Salesforce. I agree. I think they're going to be a company that's a, a good company to have for a while. And then United Health. So those are some good companies. Again, just to confirm, I do have some interest in Disney. But those other ones I do not have currently in my portfolio. I've had before in the past, got rid of some, made some <laughs> had some losses on the others. Uh, but those are some stocks that might be an uh, interest to you. But again, like what I always have said before, and I still believe today, is if you are investing with less than $100,000 to be properly diversified, you should be in a mutual fund. I think that's the best bet or an ETF. But those are, that's going to be your best bet to be diversified. Oh, we got some people joining us live. Big Nick, welcome. Welcome, buddy. Thank you for joining. Appreciate it. Okay, now I want to talk about this for a second because this is just sad. Trump went to the World Series. You probably heard about it. He got booed. And he was there was chance of lock him up. And it's sad. Like they're all like around him smiling, pretending like it's not happening. Uh but I just want to point this out. Like, who are the people that are in Washington, DC? The people that make decisions about our lives, the people that we've elected, the people we haven't elected that are in the bureaucracy, those are the people that make up the stadium to the Nationals in the World Series. And he's getting booed. He's getting booed by people that are supposed to be representing us, that are supposed to be looking out for our best interest. And yet he is the president that we elected. And I want you to think about that. And I want you to think about that because of this. It's really scary to think that so many people that are running our country that have influence in our lives and like what kind of food we can eat, what kind of warnings go in our labels, if we can, you know, do vaping or what kind of imports we're going to have, what's our interest rates going to be, all these different areas that these people that are going to this game. And they hate the president so much that we elected, which means he hates us. they hate us too because he represents us. If you hate someone or if you hate a representative of someone, you hate them too, that they're going to boo in public. Like that should never be done by our government, by the people that work for us. And those are the people that are um, supposed to be electing or representing us. Which I just want to drive home the point of why it's so important to give as most much power as possible to local governments because they are going to have more interest because you're going to have more control. Because if you live in Florida like me and you have the power with the local government, then the people in your local area are going to be determining how many regulations you have, your taxes and all that stuff. But if it's a national issue, then you have people in California determining how you live in Florida. And that is the brilliance of decentralized government and how it was supposed to be. But of course, it's easier to control people from one place instead of 50 different states, instead of the 6,000 counties that we have in our country and then the cities. But for us, the common folk, that is where we get our freedom back. That is where we get our power back is when all of those decisions get primarily made in our local area. But I just wanted, I thought that was a really great reminder for us that the people in DC don't like us. They don't, they don't like the common folk. They're busy getting handouts. They're busy buying favors. They're busy gaining control. And they hate what Trump's doing because of that, because he's going against that. 
you know, all those regulations he's cutting back. The last thing I wanted to hit, which might be a little weird if you guys have heard about it and you're not sure why, but uh, Spotify CFO says podcasts will be as important to the company as streaming is for network Netflix. So it's going to podcasts are going to be as important to Spotify as uh, the company as streaming is for Netflix. But I think he means movies because they go on an article and talk about movies. And why is that? Uh, Reform Jello called uh, our podcast with AD Robles and myself. We're on Spotify. And I, so this is what this is the truth. This is why it is important for Spotify because their margins are lower than they want because of how much money and royalties they have to pay for the content that they're selling. They have to pay, as they should, the artist. They have to pay the musicians for the music every time it's played. So when you want to support somebody like Kanye West for his album, just keep playing his album over and over again. <laughs> because every time they do that, Spotify has to pay for it. And how great would it be for this you know, liberal San Francisco company? I don't even know if they're from San Francisco, but I know they're liberal. Have to <laughs> pay a Christian rapper like Kanye West. That'd be great. So just keep um, putting them on replay. But the reason why it's so important for them to have podcasts is they don't pay podcasts anyone. They don't pay podcast money. So it's a service to providing, they're selling, and it's free for them. Now, how many businesses have that luxury of getting a product they can sell for free? And that's what podcasting is going to do. And podcasting is growing. The last statistic I saw, I think it was 47 million Americans listen to podcasts, which is pretty big. But it was it grew like 47% since 2012. So in the last five years. It's grown 47%. And that's just going to keep growing faster and faster because podcasts are going to become more and more commonplace. It's so funny. Like most people want to listen, even their video or audio, to long form interviews. They want to get information. They like, the, they almost like podcasts more than books for the people that are doing it. I think most people that listen to podcasts listen to more podcasts than read books. Uh, but it's a growing thing. But, anyways, I thought that if you were ever wondering why Spotify is doing podcasting, it's because they don't have to pay them like they do the music industry. Well, there you go. I hope you learned some new stuff. You got some stock tips. Let's go out, be successful. We'll talk to you tomorrow.